Hello, beautiful beings. <clears throat> so um, today I'm going to be giving you part four of my Christ Consciousness series. And um, I'm just going to go over a few of the things that I mentioned in my last video. You know, basically, um, we've been talking about um, the story of Christ as a metaphor. And um, it's basically translating over to mental and spiritual resurrection for humanity. And um, it's also transferring over to awareness, um, a deeper awareness of the love force and learning exactly what that's about and how we apply that to our lives and um, use that to make the planet a better place for everyone to live. And... Um, We've just been talking about how um, crucifying the ego and um, getting rid of that part of ourselves will bring us higher expressions of self. And um, we also talked about how um, the energy components um, are aligning each part of ourselves. So that would be your body, mind, and your soul. They're all being align when we have our energy centers working together and we talked about that is what the cross is about that is the symbol of the cross and what it exactly stands for and so today I'm just going to go into part four of Christ consciousness and um, basically um, part four is about um, a higher reality um, that's basically um, if you want to look at the bigger picture of that story it basically represents a higher reality for us all um, where we're going to be aligned with ourselves. We're going to be balanced and we're going to um, show that we love the rest of creation. We're not just going to say it, but we are actually going to show it. And it won't just be to the people in our families or um, our significant others. Or, um, you know, people that we know who are in our circle, it will be um, an awareness of love for the whole of humanity. And so when I'm talking about a higher reality, I'm going to um, go into death, what we experience now versus life, sickness versus wellness, quality versus quantity in life, and nature versus nurture, and faith versus Gnosis. And so um, when we're when we're talking about higher realities, um, we're talking about um, things that, you know, play out on an everyday basis that might seem really small to us. But when we look at the bigger picture, it's meant to affect change on a larger scale. And so when you're talking about death versus life, um, that is all basically dependent on the cross because your chakra systems need to be working properly in order to deliver life sustaining energies um, to the rest of your body as well as your mind so that you will be um, a fully functioning um, being with the capacity to create realities with your thoughts and actually bring your thoughts out into reality. Um, Matthew 16 and 24 through 26. Today I'm going to um, actually use a little bit of Bible scriptures. And um, I just want to let you guys know that um, I've always been drawn to the Bible. And it's not that I've um, always believed it. But I still was drawn to it based on the fact that I knew that it had knowledge and information in there that was actually true. Um, I do see some numerology and astrology in there. I see a lot of codes and symbolic um, meanings out of some of the stories. There's a lot of metaphors in there. Um, <clears throat> and um, I was just talking to a lady yesterday on Instagram, and she was saying how she learned how to read at an early age, and she's always been interested in numerology and astrology. And so um, I will say that I kind of can relate to her in that aspect because I learned how to read when I was four years old. And um, I was always drawn to the Bible and, you know, poetry, um, just different type of 
artful writing, okay? I'm drawn to that, and I am a writer, so um, that is part of my personality, and it's part of my purpose here, and um, I'm just here to actualize it, um, and with these videos, basically, I'm just putting these out there for people who want to be a part of my audience, but who really um, don't have the interest in trying to read. But if you do, um, you can always um, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hazel1190S. That's at Hazel, H-A-Z-E-L, 1190S. And um, um, I'm basically um, a metaphysical counselor and... Um, I have, I study metaphysics and, you know, I, I, I'm basically a scholar in, in that type of uh, discipline. And that's why I make these videos and um, I'm just bringing them here to you guys just to share knowledge and um, let people know, you know, how to connect um, what's going on out in the world today with our spirituality and what we're supposed to be doing so that we can take responsibility for our choices and um, do things in the world that really actually contribute to making it a better place. So um, anyways, I, like I said, um, I haven't been using the Bible before, but I'm just going to use like um, a couple of Bible scriptures and I'm not going to really read from it. So you can, if you have a Bible, you can go back inside of it and look at the scriptures for yourself and read them for yourself and let that just kind of resonate with you and um, see if you can um, find some parallels between that and what I'm saying. But um, Matthew 16, 24 to, through 26, um, he tells people to take up their cross and um, basically um, when he says that, he's telling um, them to get ready to get rid of your ego. You know, that person that you feel that you are that is separate from creation and that is separate from God. That That is something that he's, he's saying to them. You're going to have to get rid of this if you want to um, basically follow me on this path, this path of life. And when you talk about um, getting rid of your ego and everything, um, that has to do with your chakras, okay? Um, the energies that are coming in separate you from the animal beings on the planet. Um, you do have reasoning skills. You do have deduction skills. You can analyze. Um, you can step back and observe and take the information that you've observed and kind of think through that information and figure out um, what you need to do. Um, after you've analyzed everything, which animals can't do, you know, they, they base, well, some of them can, they do have a certain amount of, um, intelligence built inside of them, but it's all based on instinct and none of it is based on reason. Okay. So when I say reason, that means that we always are motivated by something else to get something else done. Okay. And so um, when he was saying that this is this is what we're talking about as far as our inner reality, and um, that's the higher reality for our inner reality. So we are still talking about higher realities. We're talking about death versus life, and we're talking about getting your chakras right, which is your inner reality, getting rid of your ego. That is your inner reality. Most of us, um, we're... Um, living out in this reality and we do you know have an ego we do feel that we're separate from creation we're our own person and here in the united states you know we really respect individualism and self-expression but at this point in time the higher reality is of that is that we are living on a planet with other people and everything that we say do and um basically just how we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis affects every single person around us and pretty much every single person in this world. We don't look at it like that, but um, I always like to refer back to what um, people call the law of one. 
And the law of one means that even though we're all here and we're all separate agents, we're separate agents of the same energy. So um, basically we are a whole separated into smaller pieces or smaller agents, okay? So um, this is basically um, part of the scheme, of the bigger scheme of things when you talk about free people from death because um, the, the imbalances that we have in our energy systems, in our chakras, if the energies, the life-sustaining energies that they deliver from our soul are not coming in correctly, then um, you you will start to manifest um, different things. You will manifest um, situations in your life that will mirror those blockages, depending on which chakras are blocked. And um, it can even manifest as something physical, okay, like a, a disease or a sickness. So, um, getting your, your chakras in order and stuff, that should be one of the main goals that people who want to be more in tune with the frequency, the, um, the energy frequency of source or what people like to term as God. Um, if you want to be more, um, in tune with source energies, um, you have to get your um, chakra systems working correctly. They can't be blocked up. The energies won't come through and you won't be able to make the biochemical and electrochemical messages that your brain counts on um, to help your body move, your brain think and calculate and come up with solutions to problems. And so all of the problems that we pretty much have on the planet today, that's why we have them. Um, we have not been paying attention to our chakra systems. You know, we've been um, basically distracted with livelihood and trying to make a living for ourselves so we can pay rent and bills and buy cars and clothes and make sure that our children can go to the doctor and just all these different things that what I like calling the matrix or our construct of the society that we live in right now presents to us, what it tells us that we need to do in order to be uh, a successful member of society. So um, our greater reality for our death versus life is actually getting our life-sustaining energies um, coming in through the chakra system, um, clearing up those blockages so that way we can think better, make better decisions, and think differently because in order to solve the problems that we have now, we can't continue to think about them in the same way that we have. We have to think differently if we want to have a solution that's actually going to work. We've been applying several environmental controls that have not worked. Prison is one of those environmental controls. It doesn't work, and we keep blocking people up there, and it's only making them worse. And then when they come back out into society, um, they're very sick, okay? They can't function properly and correctly. And even people who have never committed a crime or gone to jail, um, we try to control them with rewards and punishments. Um, that's not working anymore. So we need to look at how we're thinking and we need to change our thinking so we'll be able to provide um, effective solutions to the problem. And so um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, sickness versus health because uh, we just talked about um, those um, chakra systems being in order and and with those when those chakra systems aren't in order we know that they they manifest as mental and physical illness so um, I just really want you to think about this for a minute and um, just take note because, like I said, those life-sustaining energies are from your soul um, counterpart or your spiritual counterpart, which is directly connected to source, and it's like a battery for you. And so when you um, don't care for that and those energy centers get blocked, um, your battery starts to run down. You won't have as much energy. You won't be able to think and solve problems correctly. You'll always feel anxious. 
or you may even start to feel depressed because you're not getting things done and you don't understand why. So you start feeling bad about yourself. And so, um, you know, I just want to um, refer you back to uh, Matthew 15, 10, and 11. And um, this talks about defilement from within. And it says, hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. This um, defiles a man. So um, we do have an inner reality. Um, actually, our inner reality, it reflects on the outside. And so um, we're basically going um, from having environmental controls um, to put us in the correct mode of mind and behavior um, to having self-control when our chakras are in order. Um, so um, with that, that, that goes perfectly with sickness versus wellness because People um, want to contribute sickness to environmental factors. And there are some environmental factors that make people sick, okay? Some chemicals make people sick. We do have chemical reactions with the human body. And, um, you know, sometimes certain things just doesn't agree with um, certain bodies, okay? Depending on your chemistry and your DNA. Um, but the conflict that we're experiencing on the inside of ourselves, um, which you can refer to in Mark 7 and 14 through 25, um, the internal conflict leads to manifestation. Um, that manifestation can sometimes be sickness, drama, or chaos in your life or in your body. So um, if you would have it in your life, that would pretty much stem from um, behavior um, some type of behavior um, problems that you may be having. Um, the same pattern of behavior keeps coming up. Or you keep making a decision that you know that you shouldn't make, but you keep making that same decision. So um, this comes from the conflict that we're having on the inside of ourselves. It, it comes out and we can see it. We can see it in the relationships that we have. We can see it in the situations that we create, and we can see it in our bodies, how healthy we are. Um, usually, people who are suffering from some kind of illness, um, it was from environmental or um, it was from internal or external environmental factors, okay? If those life-sustaining energies are coming through. Um, different chakras that are blocked, they do affect different parts of our body. Like your, I know for a fact, your sacral chakra, okay, that affects your water intake. That's why I have kidney disease right now, because my sacral chakra was severely blocked. And it manifested as chronic kidney disease. But um, in a higher reality... Where we have Christ consciousness and the body of Christ is all working together um, as a human body, human family, then we'll have healings. And um, Christ consciousness means recognizing we can heal ourselves from the inside out, which means that if we create the right internal conditions inside of us, our inner reality, if we can um, put our inner reality in line, how it's supposed to be in line all the energy centers are open energies coming through going to various different parts of the body then um, we'll be able to uh, direct energy to ourselves and um, command healing from our own um, energy um, using of course using source energy but we'll be able to connect with that and we'll be able to heal ourselves. And that's why it says in the new heaven and the new earth, um, there will be um, no sickness. Everybody will be healthy and um, people will be able to live without constantly taking medications or running to the doctor. Okay, so now this is going to take us to the next part, which is quality um, versus quantity in our lives. Um, 
the higher reality would be quality. Right now we're living a life of quantity, which basically we feel like the more things that we have, the more we're able to afford, the more money that we're able to make, then what are, we feel like that is what buys us a quality of life. That is not true, okay? We have never had to buy a quality of life before. People have lived on this earth for millions of years, and we have never had to buy a quality of life. The earth has already provided for us. It gives us food, it gives us water, and it gives us air, and whatever else we need, the earth has given it to us for free. The construct of money and buying things was created um, to basically um, bring out the egos and allow us to see the dark part of ourselves and where, how far and how dark we can be, how deceptive we can be, how manipulative we can be, okay? That's the ego working. But when we have um, a good quality of life, we're not sick, okay? When we have a good quality of life, we're not dying. We don't have to die anytime we feel like we're tired of these bodies and we want out. There's a way to do that. We can do that without dying, but it's just that people have to learn and we don't know right now. We, we've forgotten. We, we, this knowledge has um, pretty much um, been hidden from us for a while. And so now we're basically coming back um, into the knowledge of it and it's starting to be um, a worldwide phenomenon where people are actually recognizing um, consciousness and the energy that uh, motivates us as human beings. And so when you're talking about quality versus quantity, we're also talking about um, loss um, and grief, um, how that affects us too. Because like I said, dying and then if we think we, we're having a better quality of life because we have more money or more material items, then loss becomes even greater, you know, when um, when it happens. It's not just, oh, you know, I lost this stuff, I can always get it back. No, you know, you feel like you pretty much lost your life or the life that you had. And you did it because you're still alive. But that's how we look at it when we, People, if you ever seen people who lost their homes and everything they own in like fires or floods or any type of natural disasters, you know, they're crying and they're blue because they don't have this stuff anymore. And they feel like everything they knew as their life <laughs> is gone. But that's not your life. Your life is actually when your chakras are not blocked and you can think properly. That's your life. So that way you can take some of the tools and material items that earth has to offer and create um, a situation for your life that is a quality situation. And, um, you know, even I experience this now. I have kidney disease and I'm sick, but I have a wonderful quality of life. I have good relationships in my life and um, I have um, a close connection with source energy. And that's basically what defines my life for me now. Um, I've been really working on myself, getting rid of the ego and working on my attachment to material things. And um, I've always felt that I've had good taste in things, so that's been really hard. But um, I've just been basically really taking a stance that um, I already have everything I need within myself. So everything on the outside is just a given. It's just a representation of what's inside of me. So now that I have nice relationships and a peaceful, calm home, and I have nice things in my home, that just shows what's inside of me. But that doesn't mean that every single time I get paid, I need to run out and go shopping and buy something new. That's not what that means. So um, I have plenty of clothes. If I want to go in my closet and just make, you know, a new outfit out of something, I can. So why would I hang out at Ross and Marshall's and um, just, you know, try to buy Michael Kors and stuff every um Every time I get paid. No, that's not what I should be doing. I need to put those energy and that, that money into something that I can do to serve the creation and give back to, you know, everybody who's given back to me. 
because all the people around me that's created things and stuff that I'm benefiting from, I owe them. And it's not money that I owe them, but I owe them to express, you know, all of the ideas and things that Source gives me back out into creation. And that's what I'm actually doing with these videos. And so um, when you also talk about quality versus quantity, you're talking about the environmental controls that we have on ourselves. Uh, we have environmental controls that, you know, try and tell us how to be, what we are to do. We're supposed to go to school. Then we graduate. Then we go to college. Then we get a job. And then we're supposed to get a six-figure income and buy a house and the car of our dreams and do all this stuff um, that they call what they call the American dream. And all that is is just um, environmental controls. Um, to keep um, people basically in one um, same box, okay, to where um, you're kept in check and they don't have to worry about you coming out with any crazy ideas or saying anything and motivating people to actually um, see what's really going on. But there's a purpose behind that, too. And it's not all so people can kill people and get all the money in the world, okay? Um, I'll, I'll tell you about that in another video. But um, all of this uh, quality versus quantity, environmental controls, being attached to material things and having grief, grief and loss behind losing people from death because we don't understand what death is really about. We don't understand that's a transition and it's part of the cycle of life. Um, that's connected to our heart health. Um, we have a lot of heart disease in America. And um, I, I, as a metaphysical scholar, I see that um, that has something to do with our heart chakras and our heart chakras being blocked up. Um, this is the missing link between understanding, you know, how to handle death or loss or grief um, and the negative energy that we pretty much um, associate with that. Because those things can be transcended with knowledge and um, with spiritual practices. And um, so now we're just going to move on to... Um, Where's that card at? I think I had, I had on each one, it was nature versus nurture, I think. Okay, guys, I don't know where it is, but um, the next one was nature versus nurture. Here it is, right here. And I um, already pretty much... Um, went into this because I read it because it related to uh, the sickness thing about manifestation of um, the blockage in our chakras as sickness and mental illness. Um, but I'll just go again because this is basically the nature versus nurture. But in the scientific argument, um, nature would say basically your genes, it would be your genetic or DNA makeup versus what happens to you in the environment and how, you know, each one has, how much influence each one has over your behavior and how you think as a person. But as we stated, um, everything that goes on inside of ourselves is reflected back into the environment. So therefore, the environment can um, only be an aid to you but it can't really force you to go one way or another. So that's why we have, you know, people who grew up in the hood like me or, you know, other people who still, you know, found a way to get out of that uh, mindset and situation and make um, something out of themselves and not just, you know, fall into what they call another statistic. Um, so, you know, that basically has to do with self-control. And self-control goes back to our chakra systems because when life-sustaining energies um, are flowing through, then your battery is charged up. Your battery is working, okay? When your battery is not working, 
you don't have that self-control. You're basically reacting off of environmental stimuli and everything in the environment. So if somebody makes you angry or upset or you lose your job or your kid is bad, okay, this is just going to set you off and um, it's going to control um, the decision that you make about what action you should take. And um, so that's what we're calling environmental controls. But um, I just want to go back to um, the word, the words nature versus nurture, the way that they are spelled. It's almost spelled like neater. And neater, um, I think, is, is the Egyptian um, word for soul. Okay, that's the Egyptian word for your battery. And your battery is what gives you self-control. Your battery is not reacting to everything. So based on the way that an animal behaves and based on the way that we're supposed to behave, without that soul component, we're basically pretty much behaving like an animal. You know, everything that happens outside of ourselves dictates how we think and what decision that we make and what is the next action that we'll take to counteract that. And we can't have control over our situation and our environment. We can't create properly because that's what um, creation is. You're creating realities for yourself and the people around you and everyone in creation. You can't create those realities if you're always reacting. Um, you have to be proactive when you're creating realities. And so um, I just think the, the whole nature versus nurture argument is um, pretty much uh, misinformed because um, the the true um, nurturing and nature is within ourselves. We have an inner reality that natures and nurtures us as well. And we are the ones who tell people how to care for us, how to love us when we love ourselves from the inside or when we appreciate ourselves from the inside. Other people can see that. And when they see that, then that gives them instruction on what you need as a being. If that's not in order, um, people are, don't get those signals and um, they get other messages from you. Okay, they may be unspoken messages, but those other messages that they get from you tells them, you know, it's okay to uh, act a certain way or basically treat you a certain way. So that's what, what we have think about when we're trying to attract love in our lives um, or have better relationships um, with people. Do we actually know what love is? Are we loving ourselves from the inside or um, are we expecting other people to show us an expression of love and we're not expressing it to ourselves? So if we're waiting on that, if that other person doesn't know what love is and they, they don't know how to express love, um, that's not going to be a good combination because um, you're waiting on them to give you something that they don't have to give. So um, that brings me into my next topic, and we're still talking about Christ consciousness. This is part four, and we're talking about the higher realities um, that Christ consciousness brings. Um, and so... Um, one of the things that, you know, some people might have a problem with what I'm saying right now, but I'm just going to give you the truth. Um, it's faith versus gnosis or knowing. Um, in Matthew 6, um, 25 through 27 is um, a scripture that you can go to and see how this resonates with you. See if you can connect it to what I'm saying. But um, your survival is based on earth and source energy currents. You think it's based on money, but it's not based on that, okay? If you know that, you don't have to have faith because you don't have to wonder where anything is coming from. And I think that scripture in Matthew 6, 25 through 27, it tells you that even the birds don't even worry about where their food is going to come from. Like they automatically know. So if the birds know, how come you know? You should know. And um, I'm just going to say that a lot of, um, there's a lot of inverted, inverted meanings in the Bible. So anywhere where you see that there, there's a, some type of faith talks about, you need to basically um, cross that out and replace it with the word gnosis or knowing, which means that you have, you are absolutely 
sure that in your reality, this is going to happen. Okay. So that's one of the ways that um, we'll be able to facilitate healing in the future by knowing all the components of um, our being and how they work and, and knowing that we have control over that will automatically be able to understand how we can heal ourselves without outside medication, doctors, or, you know, any other treatment. So um, we're getting there. That's part of the Christ consciousness that we're entering the new heaven and the new earth. So um, basically, he was saying we should already know because we have evidence. The bird knows. The bird doesn't have faith that food or water will come. The construct or value through money forces us to have faith. But in the system, we don't really need money. And so not needing money is one of those higher realities. Um, just being able to know that you can think and manifest um, anything for your life that you want. Okay? That is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> um, and when, like he says, when you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. So the kingdom of Heaven is actually up here with this system right here. It's the cross, right and left side brain with the cross interceding in the middle, making sure that it mediates your thoughts. It takes in environmental stimuli, but it doesn't have you react, react to environmental stimuli. Um, you're able to actually think about um, things clearly. And um, even though you might feel like, oh, that burger with cheese looks really good, you might think, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be eating that because, you know, I want my spiritual um, senses to work properly. And it takes 36 hours to digest beef. So for 36 hours, you know, I won't feel connected to source energy. Is eating that burger really worth it? Um, that's what those energies coming through um, help you do. So a lot of people that are having weight problems, you're having problems losing weight, you're having problems sleeping, or maybe you're having problems eating, you're not having a proper um, appetite. Um, if you're having problems in relationships, getting to know people, if you have any type of problems with addictions or any type of dependencies, Dependency on another person to where you can't go anywhere or do anything without that person. Um, or dependency on any type of substance. Um, it's because your energy levels are not coming in sufficiently. Okay? They're misfiring or they're not coming in at all and creating the chemicals that you need in your brain. So, they'll translate over into... Um, processing your thoughts better and um, you'll actually have the consciousness of your soul to help you reason with your right and left side of your brain. Some people are not having that consciousness and so they're just basically, like I said, going off of environmental stimuli and um, those chemicals are firing off from things on the outside. So whatever gives you those pleasurable feelings and stuff, that's what people are running to. Okay, that could be drugs, that could be a person, it could be a job, um, it could be pornography. Um, you know, people are addicted to a lot of things. I used to be addicted to exercise. I mean, exercise really just um, set those chemicals off in my brain. And so um, I started doing it. It was twice a day, then three times until it was just out of control to where I was doing it all day, okay? Even stepping on a scale uh, made me feel, because if I, if I stepped on a scale and I lost a pound or two pounds, whoo, those chemicals got the fire off in my brain. And next thing you know, I was dependent on exercise. Like, I couldn't do anything if I didn't get that daily workout in, Okay. And like I said, I was doing it two and three and four times a day. So that was taking me away from regu regular pleasurable activities and spending time with people and everything. That's basically the same thing of what drugs do. And that's why we can be addicted to anything. Because if those, whichever chakra system isn't working, um, it has a behavior and a thought process that counteracts with that.
And so when when that chakra is not working, that energy is not coming through to translate or manifest over into those other chemicals that we need in our um, in our brain, then um, it will actually cause you to have an addiction to some type of environmental stimuli or things that are on the outside of you that are motivating you and causing you to feel better. And so that's um, basically we talked about um, a higher, the higher realities of Christ consciousness, which is um, instead of death, we'll have life. Instead of sickness, we'll have wellness. Instead of um, quantity of material items, we'll have quality of life and relationships with the people around us. Um, we talked about um, nature versus nurture is all inside of us and it comes from our soul. Um, <clears throat> being able to give us balance um, in our thought energy um, with reasoning and um, just basically helping us to be able to be conscious of everything um, that's around us. And instead of being reactive to environmental stimuli, we're proactive uh, with uh, our self-control, um, understanding that just because we can do something, we shouldn't. Or just because the environment um, possesses something and offers it to us that makes us feel good, it doesn't mean that we should partake in it and use that as something to fuel our motivation. And then we talked about faith versus Gnosis or knowing. And we talked about how um, the, the animals in nature even understand that they are already provided for each day. They may have to do a, uh, make a few efforts um, to get that worm out the hole or, you know, get that first meal of the day. But um, they've already been provided for by source and um, source energy. And so um, when you talk about faith, um, faith in the Bible should be replaced with knowing. Because some things that we already know, we know that there's energy inside of us. We know that we're running off of a battery. We feel it. Sometimes we wake up and say, you know what? I don't feel like I have enough energy just to get stuff done. That's when you know. We know we got energy inside of us. So why are we claiming um, God through faith or belief? There's no reason to claim that through faith or belief. We know it's true. We know it's real. We feel it. We understand that. We understand that through the effects that it has on our body or how much things that we're able to get done throughout the day. OK, so let us understand and understand what faith really represents. Um, that represents uh, basically confidence in the system of things or basically confidence in the way that we think about things. So we need to let that go. And we need to actually claim our gnosis that we know what's going on and we understand that. And we need to work from that premise and stop um, acting like we don't know. Because when we don't know, then we do have insecurities. And our insecurities sometimes um, drive us to allow certain things outside of ourselves to control us. Okay? So let us look at the higher... Uh, reality of life, wellness, quality of life, um, self-control, and knowledge of energy, source, and God. And um, let us just think on that, you know, where the way it uh, basically connects to the story of Christ. And um, let us see the metaphorical meaning in that, you know which is being a better person um, to have love for yourself and to be able to function um, in creation to bring out the higher realities of what we want to see. We don't want to see people um, dying from disease. Um, we don't want to see people making bad decisions that are causing them to die. Um, we don't want to see people have a poor quality of life. When you say poverty, that's what I think of in poverty because I don't make a lot of money. 
but I'm happy and I'm provided for and I have everything that I need. And I trust every morning when I wake up each day. You know, I started a, a business um, last year and I spent some um, credit, some credit to go and get the license for that business. Um, and I became a process server. And, you know, I was only working for one attorney, my sister, for a long time. But something told me, don't be money motivated. If you keep thinking the right way, um, the law of attraction will bring you um, some prosperity. And um, so I, I, I just kind of internalized that for a while. And I did, I still did things to make extra money when I could, when it was presented to me. But I didn't allow that to motivate me each day. I didn't wake up that day happy because I had a prospect or didn't have a prospect to make money. And I didn't think, oh, because I don't have that prospect today, you know, this is going to be a really horrible day and my life is really horrible. I mean, some people actually think that. And if there was something that I had to go without, I was still okay within my person because I felt like, okay, I might not have this right now, but this doesn't say anything about who I am. I can still smile. I can still be happy. I can still enjoy my life and have positive energy around myself, okay? And so um, sometimes I may not even have the food that I want. I probably just had, you know, a couple things in the refrigerator that I could eat, okay? But, I mean, I'm more spiritually minded. So even if I ha might not have anything that much to eat, I know that I'm going to get something soon. And um, my main goal is to keep my mind stable, okay? And that takes spiritual food. So sometimes I, I really fast and don't even eat regular food. So that way my digestion doesn't take away from my spiritual energy. And me digesting spiritual food. And so um, all of that, you know, comes just in gnosis. You have to know and be confident and the fact that you are endowed with source energy, that's part of your battery system. If you have everything in order and you do what you're supposed to do. If you're eating a crazy diet, processed foods and stuff, it's not going to work. If you're around people who are reflecting negative negativity to you about yourself, it's not going to work. Okay? If you're not aware of the fact that um, you are influence a great deal about who you are this planet and everybody around you because of the source energy that is contained within your being um you're not going to have confidence in yourself okay so you have to know your higher self and that's your higher self when you know that source being is working source is working through your being source energy and your batteries all charged up and everything you're going to be confident you're going to feel good about yourself it's not it's not going to be too many things anybody can say or do and you're not going to be around people who say or do things that are negative and affect you in a negative way and um basically take you off of your path of life and so um to me i think um mostly that's what um it means to have Christ consciousness or be part of the body of Christ, um, you're, you're basically looking at this higher reality and you're not looking at um, the smaller things. You're not looking at, oh, you know, so-and-so died. So, you know, I'm going to um, stay in my room for six months and I'm not going to eat or drink anything and I'm going to get really sick and lose weight. No, you know what I'm saying? You don't understand that death is a cycle of life in the higher reality is that this must take place in order for us to understand how to transcend death, okay? Um, you won't be thinking, oh, woe is me, I'm sick. I can't do anything. I may as well hate the world, okay? No, you're going to realize the higher reality. Okay, I'm sick. What, what does this mean for my life? How am I supposed to use this to make me into a better person? How can I take this to help other people, okay? Those are hard realities. So um, I hope that you got something from part four. And um, just to let you know, um, that was part four. But um, I have part five, which part five is going to be um, mental and spiritual resurrection. 
So I'm going to go um, more into detail with that and um, talk about um, what that has to do with Christ consciousness and the story about Christ in the Bible. And then part six is going to be uh, higher self-expression. So um, when we're talking about Christ consciousness, we're going to be dealing with the higher man and how um, that is expressed um, in Christ consciousness. And then I have uh, part seven. And part seven, that's going to be the best one because it's going to be about energy work. And um, it's going to talk about um, how energy work is the basis for healing. Um, how that connects with solving the energy crisis on the planet, transcending negative behavior, and um, how money is um, basically a translator of energy. And so um, I hope that you'll come back and join me for that and um, get more knowledge, more understanding about the story of Christ and Christ consciousness. Um, I'm also going to um, do some videos. I'm going to do a video called Energy. It's going to be about your inner battery, your inner God, um, or your soul consciousness. Um, I'm going to do a video about mirroring, um, and it basically is going to talk about how we took one reality and we built multiple realities around that, or multiple um, illusions um, in just this one reality. And then um, I'm going to do a video about the chakra system. Um, science meets spirituality, so I'm just going to be talking about the, the chakras and how um, they translate over into life-sustaining energies for um, our body and mind and what that means for our health and wellness um, from a mental and physical perspective. And um, then I'm going to do a video about uh, relationships and how relationships reflect back to you who you are and how you can use relationships to make more conscious decisions and um, to create your reality. And so um, I'm going to get out of here. Um, beautiful beings, peace, love, and light to you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.